Hi everyone. Um, today's video is going to be a little bit different than really anything I've ever kind of done before. Um, today's a complicated day because I'm reaching a, a one-year anniversary of a day that's not particularly happy, but I feel compelled to just be transparent and just share. It's not something I was planning to talk about quite like this. If anything, I was kind of hoping for a different outcome so that by the time I came around to sharing this story, it has a happy ending. Exactly one year ago, today, it was my last day working at Disney. Just to give you a little bit more context, I moved to LA just over two years ago and it was a really hard first year in LA. One, just moving in general is stressful. Two, getting settled in first time living with my boyfriend at the time, working at a job prior to Disney that I did not like and I didn't feel 100%. I felt like I was still trying to build and get back to feeling 100% happy. So once I got the call working at Disney, I was over the moon. <laughs> and I loved going to work every single day. Long story short, I still didn't feel completely happy and that's when I realized that my relationship was not in a good place. I could see the writing on the wall, things were not working out and I eventually realized that though I'm now happy at work, I'm no longer happy at home. My boyfriend and I, we broke up. There was a transition period where we still lived together for two months after the breakup until he finally moved out and then the pandemic hit. But luckily at that point, at the end of March, beginning of April, I finally got my place to myself. I was working at Disney and even though the pandemic hit and shut everything else down, I myself felt very much a sense of security and relief and like, okay, though there's a pandemic, I am finally here in LA, I'm living on my own, I'm working at a job that I wanna make my career, this is amazing, you will be fine, you will do great and then just over three and a half weeks later, I lose my job. Now to be fair, millions of other people working were, were furloughed or, or let go because of the pandemic. The timing of it all was just very jarring from moving to LA, not feeling completely happy, thinking it was work-related, finally getting my dream job and thinking everything's gonna be great, but then realizing my relationship's not good, then going through the breakup and finally getting through the transition of a breakup to being happy fully again and then the pandemic hit and then I lose my job. The day that they sent a box to ship back my work laptop and all my work belongings, that was really tough packing it up, especially my Disney badge. I remember posting pictures on my first day at Disney. Obviously that the day where I'm having to pack these things up and ship them out with no knowledge of when, if I'll ever see them again was very, very painful, very, very emotional. Almost every sense of security that I had for my own life here was taken away. And I did not want to share this publicly. Everyone close to me knew what was going on, but for um, other people who maybe inquired, I would just say that I was furloughed and kind of in an in-between waiting period. And if people didn't inquire, I just didn't say anything. And then the rest of 2020 just went in waves. As so many of us know, it was a wave of not knowing when it was gonna end. Rising COVID cases and people in unemployment only escalating and not changing, things remaining shuttered. One thing that ate at me and I have never ever talked about with anyone was when you're with friends who weren't impacted by the pandemic, at least job-wise, um, they were still working and I'm so, uh, gr grateful and, and so proud of so many of my friends who were able to continue working during that time and they weren't impacted the same way I was. But in those rooms, in those conversations, hearing about uh, long days at work or work stresses or annoying people and interactions at work. And I just kept thinking silently to myself, God, I wish for a long day at work. God, I wish to have had an annoying conversation with someone at work, or I wish that I had to dial into five unnecessary conference calls. 
I missed it so much. And it just made me re-realize my situation, which I never ever brought up to them. I never wanted to make anyone feel shame or, or guilty to be talking about their work life around me just because I happened to be unemployed. So I never shared this with anybody, but that always went through my mind every single time they would be talking about work, which they had every right to be doing. I tried to take control over what I could control in my life. And so with the f added free time that I did have to myself at home, I, I kept up with my own video project. I shared my coming out story for the first time on like a viral video platform, which I was very proud about. And I continued to make even more videos, opening up more about my life and just sharing stories about uh, my, my few life experiences and how I kind of ended up where I ended up. And I was just pouring that much more time and energy into various video projects that I had so much fun creating. And then come fall 2020 and um, and that's when my best friend told me to start a TikTok. Yes, I need glasses and I am not ashamed. I have a sexy young man who loves to fuck me and I'm fabulous. Great news. <gasps> She's fat. She's blind. Yes! It's a horrible sound. Children. Oh, your life is gross. My life is amazing. And that was the beginning of something brand new. It opened up a whole new world of creativity within my own brain. Don't touch my Coke Zero. Tell the truth. It's horrendous. It's horrendous. It's modern. Don't lie. I'm not. I look like a pencil. If that's a veiled criticism about me, I won't hear it and I won't respond to it. But also something that can bring joy to others. I love to make people laugh. Was your name Jennifer? No, it's Tinnifer with two Y's. I used to be Jennifer, but then I decided to rebrand myself. I think I'm having a heart attack is you what's did? happening. You are like 34. I'm basically 29. I'm just gonna go spend my time doing exactly what I wanna do because I don't have children. And through all of this, I will say I'm so grateful to my family and my friends who have been a tremendous support along the way. I don't know what the hell I would have done without them. And I can't stress enough that I, I, I am very lucky and blessed to have had the support from my family and friends as I've had. I'm grateful for the good and I'm grateful for all of the good things that are happening, but not a single day goes by where I don't think about work and I don't think about uh, going to the office and seeing my coworkers. I miss it every single day. I still feel a sense of embarrassment or self-consciousness, specifically in like meeting new people, not wanting to go into the, you know, the what do you do for a living? And I, you know, have, have to give an answer to that. It's still been very, hard to talk about and and figure out a way to spin it to where it doesn't make me feel shameful, embarrassed, or awkward about it. And so I've just glazed over it or not even brought it up. But like all of this year, it's still up in the air. I feel like I am being held back. I feel like I am behind in where I want to be within my own life. I have goals for myself. I set expectations for myself. Those are the feelings and thoughts that go through my head all the time. At the end of the day, I firmly believe that things happen for a reason. And I do believe there is light at the end of the tunnel. I think that we closed a chapter and this is a transition period to where like most journeys and most transitions, it's painful, it sucks, and you just wanna skip to the resolution and getting to the other side of it. And I, I, and I so wish I could just skip to the other side of this, but that is life. And I'm very grateful for the amount of love that I still continue to feel by the people in my life. Something my mom always says to me is, um, one day at a time, tomorrow has enough problems of its own, just take it one day at a time. So that's what I do. And one thing I have always said to myself is that it's going to be fine, no matter what. Throughout every single hardship, 
turmoil, what have you, that I have gone through, everything turns out all right. Everything sorts itself out and you do come out the other side. And so on this one year anniversary of me losing my job, I guess it's good for me to be able to reflect and take ownership over this, be transparent about it and look at the big picture, focus on the good, um, be grateful for what I do have. Thank you all for listening to me rant and share and I, this video might seem silly or pandering and it's not me trying to throw any type of pity party. It's just me sharing my heart, sharing, choosing to share a big part of my life and what's been going on and just release it and focus on the future. And so, as I've said before to myself, everything is going to be okay.